Vendor accounts are structured similarly to GL accounts. They are made up of the two following areas. General data. A vendor account is defined for all company codes at the client level. General data such as the vendor's name and address is stored here. Company code. Postings cannot be made to the account for a company code until company code specific settings have been created. These settings refer only to the relevant company code and include details such as agreed payment conditions or reconciliation account. This slide shows the initial screen to display a vendor master record. Vendor accounts can be divided into various account groups in the same way as GL accounts. They can be organized and managed more easily. The account group controls the screen layout of all areas of the vendor master record, not just the company code data as is the case with GL account groups. Note, the accounts in an account group usually have similar characteristics. For example, you could have one account group for domestic vendors, one for vendors abroad, one for affiliated vendors, and one for one-time vendors. You can easily create and post vendor invoices or credit memos using a one-screen transaction. This type of invoice entered directly in Accounts Payable is a miscellaneous invoice without reference to a purchase order. The Accounts Payable Entry screen is divided into the following areas. Work Templates. Here, you can select Screen Variants, Account Assignment Templates, or Held Documents as references. Header and Vendor Data. Document Header and Vendor Line Item Data is entered here. General Ledger Account Items. The General Ledger Line Items for the document are entered here. Information area. The document balance and information about the vendor is displayed here. This transaction can also be used to create documents in a foreign currency. The foreign currency amount is translated into local currency using defined exchange rates. When entering an expense item for an operating expense, you must also enter a cost accounting relevant assignment such as a cost center or internal order. This means that when the item is posted, documents are created in management accounting and accounting. A primary cost element must exist for the GL account in order for this to happen. The management accounting document posts the costs corresponding to the expense to the management accounting object. In the case described, the vendor invoice entered only affected one account assignment object, a specific cost center. An invoice occasionally has multiple account assignment objects, such as two different cost centers. For example, the real estate commission for finding apartments for two employees from different departments. To resolve this issue, the IDES group has decided that balance sheets and P&L statements are to be created for every individual segment. The affected segment does not have to be specified manually when the posting is made because it is derived from the cost center automatically. What does the posting look like in this case? Three line items are entered first. The vendor line item with the total amount. Expense item 1. First, cost center and the corresponding segment is derived from the cost center. Expense item 2. Second cost center and also the associated segment. The fourth item, that is tax item, is determined based on the tax code and the relevant settings when the simulation or posting is carried out and then either displayed or posted. Note. This means that the document contains four line items in total. See the figure.
You can specify in customizing that the system is to complete the missing entries automatically. The amended and now full amount is shown in the figure. You have to activate document splitting to ensure uniform splitting of the segment characteristic or any other entity. Systematic segmentation means that a zero balance position is reached for each document with regard to the entity in question. The document now consists of six line items. The vendor line item and the tax item are split across the two segments A and B. The balance for each segment is now zero. The balance sheet and PNL statement can be created in full and the balance sheet is balanced. As well as the split, the illustration also shows how the segment entity is inherited by the accounts payable and tax items in the document. In order to post two accounts in financial accounting that have got a primary cost element in CO, you need to assign a CO account assignment object. The account assignment object itself can either be a real or a statistical object. For example, an internal order is defined as real or statistical when it is created. A real order can only be executed with real postings and a statistical order only with statistical postings. The cost center is an exception to this rule. This is always a real object. It can be posted to in both real and statistical postings. Postings on real controlling objects can be allocated to other objects in CO. You can also specify statistical controlling objects as account assignment objects in addition to real controlling objects. You cannot allocate costs posted to statistical controlling objects to other objects. These account assignments are for information purposes only. You can make statistical assignments during posting to any number of controlling objects. You can use the recurring entry program for postings that are repeated at regular intervals, such as rent payments and payments of fees and property taxes. With this program, the necessary documents are generated automatically. Recurring business transactions must be stored in the system as recurring entry original documents for this to be possible. Each recurring entry original document contains the date of the first and last postings, the frequency at which postings should be made, and the date of the next planned posting. The recurring entry program must be started at regular intervals within a specified period. The program selects all recurring entry original documents in which the date of the next posting falls within the specified period and then generates a batch input session. When the batch input session is run, an accounting document that corresponds to the original document is posted and the date of the next posting is updated in the original recurring entry document. All payment transactions include the elements shown in the figure. A payment transaction can be carried out either manually or automatically using the payment program. The standard system contains common payment methods and corresponding forms are defined separately for each country. This slide provides an overview of the automatic payment program. The payment program was developed for the international payment transactions between vendors and customers. This program can be used for incoming and outgoing payments. However, it is more commonly used for outgoing payments. The automatic payment process comprises the following steps. Maintain parameters. Run a payment proposal. Check the payment proposal. The payment run. Print payment media. Step 1 is maintaining the parameters. You use the parameters to define which accounts and items the payment program is to include in the automatic payment run.
Step 2 is the proposal run. During the proposal run, the system does the following. Checks the accounts and documents specified in the parameters for due items. Groups items due for payment. Selects the relevant payment methods, house banks and partner banks. Step 3 is checking and editing the payment proposal. This step can be omitted, but you are advised to check that the data is accurate before actually running the payment program. Step 4 is the payment run. During the payment run, the system does the following. Posts payment documents. Clears open items. Prepares data for the printing of payment media. Step 5. Print payment media. Payment media are generated in this step. One of the following occurs. Payment media such as checks are printed. IDOCs are generated for the electronic data interface or EDI. A data file is created as part of the data medium exchange. The system comes with standard payment media programs for many countries and many payment methods. In this figure, the payment program RFFOD underscore S is activated to print checks in Germany. In USA, the program RFFOUS underscore C is used. The central organizational object in logistics is the plant. A plant is an operating area or branch within a company. A plant can be a central delivery warehouse, a regional sales office, a manufacturing facility, a corporate headquarter or a maintenance plant. A plant must be assigned to a single company code. However, one or more plants can be assigned to the same company code. Some of the plants included in IDES company code 1000 Germany are 1000 Hamburg, 1100 Berlin, 1200 Dresden, 1300 Frankfurt and 1400 Stuttgart. All company code relevant transactions from these plants are posted in company code 1000 because these plants are assigned to company code 1000. In order for the procurement process to be used in materials management for a vendor, the vendor master record of that vendor must have the purchasing data. The purchasing data is specific to a single purchasing organization, just like the company code data of the master record is specific to a single company code. In the same way that several company code segments of the vendor master record can exist, there can be several purchase data segments of the vendor master record. Every purchase data segment presents data which are specific for exactly one purchase organization. You can access purchasing data of vendor master records in accounts payable accounting with the central maintenance transaction. Transaction codes XK01 to XK03. The procurement cycle is as follows. Demand determination. The department responsible can register a requirement for materials manually via a purchase order to purchasing. Determining the source of supply. The purchaser responsible is supported by the system in determining possible sources of supply. One possibility for determining the source of supply is creating queries and subsequently entering the quotations. Furthermore, you can access purchase orders and conditions that already exist in the system. Supplier selection. Comparing the prices in the different quotations makes selecting suppliers easier. Letters of rejection can be sent automatically. Purchase order handling. When creating purchase orders, the system provides you with the entry process. Purchase order monitoring. The purchaser can monitor the processing status of the purchase order in the system. For example, the purchaser can determine whether the goods or the invoice have been received for the corresponding purchase order item. Dunning processes are also supported. Goods receipt. The system checks the amount of goods received against the purchase order quantity. Invoice verification. 
The vendor invoices are checked to see if the accounting and the content are correct. Payment processing. The vendor payment is usually done in financial accounting. The three-step verification, commonly referred to as the three-way match, is the standard procedure for posting procurement transactions in materials management or MM. The procedure is as follows. Purchase order, create a purchase order in materials management or MM. Do not make any postings in financial accounting or FI. Goods receipt. To update the receipt of inventory or consumable material, generate a material document in MM. At the same time, create a document in FI that posts the value of the goods to the merchandise account as a debit and the goods receipt or invoice receipt or GRIR to the clearing account as a credit in the general ledger. Invoice verification. Post a vendor invoice in MM using invoice verification. This automatically generates a document in FI. The accounting document contains the invoice amount that gets posted to the GRIR account, that is debit, and the vendor account, that is credit. The last two steps can be completed in reverse order, depending on the order the goods and the invoice are received. The goods receipt or invoice receipt clearing account ensures that goods were received for each invoice and vice versa. The purchase order screen has several subdivisions. Type of document and vendor. Header data. Position details. Item details. Year-end closing can be divided into two main sections. Legal requirements, that is procedures required by the government authorities. Technical and organizational requirements, that is procedures that are technically required or needed to support the accounting organization. At the beginning of the fiscal year, the Balance Carry Forward program is run, carrying forward the balances of the vendor accounts to the next fiscal year. The posting periods of the old fiscal year are blocked and the special periods for closing postings for fiscal year-end adjustments are opened. Afterwards, the balances with selected vendors are confirmed. The foreign currency documents are evaluated and the accounts payable are regrouped according to remaining life required only in certain countries. Once complete, the special periods can be closed. The program for creating balance confirmations also creates reply requests for a freely definable number of vendors, a reconciliation list, and a results table. The balance confirmations and reply requests are sent to the vendors. The lists are used as a control measure. The vendors check the balance information they receive and send their replies to the control center or the department which compares the replies with the reconciliation list and enters the results in the results table. A foreign currency valuation is necessary if vendor accounts contain open items in a foreign currency. The amounts of these open items are translated to the local currency at the time they are entered using the exchange rate that is valid on the posting date. The exchange rate is probably different at the time of closing and open items need to be evaluated again. A program evaluates the open items using the new exchange rate and enters the valuation difference in the valuated line items. It creates the valuation postings in either of the following ways. Expense from foreign currency valuation to balance sheet adjustment account. Balance sheet adjustment account to revenue from foreign currency valuation. Note, a valuation document cannot post directly to the payable account because reconciliation accounts cannot be directly posted to. For this reason, postings appear in an adjustment account which is displayed in the balance sheet item of the associated reconciliation account.
Evaluation method determines how the individual line items are evaluated. This has to be set up in conjunction with the country specific valuation regulations. It defines, for example, whether the lowest value principle or a general principle has to be used for valuation. Valuation areas are used in financial accounting for closing operations. You can use them to depict different valuation approaches or accounting principles. Accounts payable and receivable have to be listed separately in the balance sheet. As it is possible for some vendors to have a debit balance, these accounts need to be changed to vendors with a debit balance prior to creating the financial statements. In many countries, it is also necessary to group accounts payable in the balance sheet based on their remaining life. Both regroupings are carried out using a special program. At the same time, these regroupings are removed on the first day of the next period since regroupings are not necessary for daily processing. The figure displays how payables with long remaining terms were posted to adjustment accounts separately so that the balance sheet could be prepared. Additionally, vendors with a debit balance are regrouped. An adjustment account is used as the offsetting account here as well, since adjustments cannot be posted directly to a reconciliation account.